Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology News webinar. It's entitled Monitoring Product and Process Attributes in Biopharmaceutical Development and QC. Therapeutic proteins are subject to deamidation, oxidation, glycosylation, and other post-translational modifications. These finishing touches are not merely ornamental. They can also alter essential factors such as structure, binding, stability, and activity, factors that can influence a biotherapeutic drug's clinical effectiveness and safety. LCMS has been a foundational technology for the discovery and characterization of biotherapeutic attributes. Two MS methods in particular have demonstrated the capability of filling this role, high-resolution MS and the novel quadrupole detection technology platform. These will be the focus of today's webinar. I'm John Sterling, and I'm Editor-in-Chief of GEN, and I'm going to serve as the moderator. But first, let's meet our webinar panelists. Dr. Jing Feng is Senior Scientist, and Dr. Robert Birdsall is Principal Scientist. Both are from Waters, and both focus on biopharmaceutical science. After the panelists make their presentations, there will be a question and answer segment. Feel free to send in a question for our panelists at any time during the webinar. Type your question into the Ask a Question box on the lower left of your console, and then hit Submit. The panel will try to answer as many questions as possible. Dr. Ang will be our first presenter. Jing? Okay. Thank you, John, for introduction. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. In this webinar, I and my colleague, Robert Borso, will talk about our LC solutions in monitoring product and process attributes in later development and quality control environment. Mass spectrometry, especially high-resolution mass spec, has been playing a critical role during biotherapeutic development widely used for protein characterization. In recent years, driving by quality by design initiative, which requires building a much better understanding of the process and the product quality attributes, there is an increased demand for GMP compliance LC mass solution that can be implied further downstream to later development and the production QC labs in different stage, the analytical requirements are different. Like in the early stage, the major focus is for fully characterize the candidate molecules and again in dense knowledge. When the candidate molecules are successfully moved to later development and the manufacturing, robust qualification, validation, and meet regulatory compliance requirements become more important. While we see these trends and needs, we also need to consider the challenge of deploying mass spec technology in this regulated environment, such as technology transferring, investment of time, resource, and cost, Based on this consideration, we provide our customers two compliant ready LC mass solutions. One is our Acuity UPRC and a high resolution mass spec with unified informatics platform solution. This solution provides the benefit of accurate mass measurement and high sensitivity. The alternative solution is Acuity UPRC combined with a mass detector QDA and an empower system. It offers greater accessibility and a minimal requirements on maintenance in the training. Today, I will focus on demonstrating the high-resolution mass spec and a unified solution. And Robert is going to discuss the application of the QDA empower system. In the first solution, 
we use the same hardware, which is our Zewo QTOF and a Wine, a Mobility QTOF family, and the same software unifying in both product characterization and attribute monitoring, which facilitates the method transfer between the two platforms. To those who are not familiar with Unify, I like to take the opportunity to give a brief introduction. At Waters, we have developed an integrated biopharmaceutical platform solution within Unified Scientific Information System to support various characterization workflows, including intact protein, peptide mapping, released glycan, and bioseparations. Unify also provide an accurate mass screening workflow to dedicate in attribute monitoring and quantification for peptides and released glycans. Unify is able to acquire the data and process the data during acquisition and automatically generate report. Unify is built on Oracle Rational Database to increase compliance, provide comprehensive audit trail, automatic calculations and reporting to avoid human errors. The workflow is optimized to specific applications, simplifies standard operating procedures. Waters also provide compliance service, instrument quantification and software validation. In order to demonstrate our workflow, we choose TrustNewsMap as example. From previous publications, we have some general knowledge about this molecule, such as the aspartic isomerization can cause the loss of potency, and methylene oxidation in the constant domain can affect the interactions with FC receptor. To monitor the change of these product attributes, we did a stability study by treating the molecule under different stress conditions, include alkylide and oxidation stresses. Then we used the same set of samples for both high-res mass spec and QDA analysis. In this slide, we showed the workflow of peptide mapping and monitoring. First, we use standard protocol for sample preparation. And the digest were separated by accurate UPRC H-class biosystem. The column we used was Waters CSH 2.1 millimeter column. For detection, we have the optical detector and the QTOF mass spec in tandem. Data was acquired and processed through Unify, which enable an efficient transition between the two informatics approach. The two data processing workflows share the same acquisition method. For peptide characterization was performed in peptide mapping workflow. Within this workflow, Peptide was assigned based on accurate mass and fragmentation information. And then sequence coverage were generated, and the modifications were profiled. After gaining enough knowledge of the critical attribute, we can translate the knowledge by building a library within Unify by simply one click and use the library to prime an accurate mass screening workflow to do a targeted quantification of the selected attributes. The software has the flexibility, allow us to set up system suitability and a limit check. And it gives us the red flag if it exists the limit. For new picks that are not in our target list, we are able to identify those by sending back to peptide mapping workflow. Let's start from the characterization of Trastuzumab. 
After filtering out semi-digest in source fragments and neutralized, we are able to achieve a high sequence coverage. The red and blue lines represent the coverage of B and wine ions. When a mobility q achieves higher accurate mass measurement, under MSE mode, 99% of the peptides have mass error is less than 3 ppm. For 10 peptide cross 10 injection, the mass error is less than 5 ppm. Large dynamics range of five order of magnitude ensures the accurate of a quantification. This is the reviewing window of peptide mapping workflow. The left panel is the sample and injection information. The top panel is the complex list. We achieve higher fragmentation efficiency under data independent acquisition mode, even for low abundance modified form, for example, the T3 deamidation peptide. With high confidence, we are able to create the list of the interested attributes. We can directly send all the targeted components to scientific library in a bench. All information associated with the peptide are imported to the scientific library, such as sequence, commodifications, retention time, and accurate mass. Now we use the accurate mass screening workflow to do targeted quantification of the interested components. Here's the attribute list is directly imported from the scientific library. For targeted peptide screening, we set up the mass tolerance is less than 5 ppm, and the retention time window is within 0.5 minutes. Signature fragment eyes could add it to increase the confidence. The software provides the flexibility to choose one or all charge state for quantification. Look at the result. We would like to check the system suitability to prove the data we collected is valuable and the system is well controlled. This function is also customer designable. Here, I choose chromatographic width to make sure samples are loaded properly. And using the UV response to check the instrument performance before mass back. Take a peptide which is resistant to the force stress as an example. The wrong to wrong variation is mainly from sample preparation. It's because within the replicates, the deviations is very small. Here is the result review window and the screening workflow. It is very similar to the peptide mapping workflow, which minimizes the training effort. Take glycosylation as an example. Two charge states are highlighted here are identified and considered in quantification. The confirmed fragment ions, oxidamide ions, are labeled here. I plot the modification percentage of the major glycan forms across all 27 samples. We can see a very stable distribution across the whole stressed sample, which is as we expected, that glycosylation is resistant to the force degradation condition. The statistic data of the modification percentage are showing on the top panel, including mean, percentage RSD, and standard deviation. For glycosylation, most of them, the percentage RSDs is less than 5%. Then let's take a look 
the modifications that are affected by the stress study. First is the amputation. Take asparagine 13 in the lichen CDR domain as example. We need to quantify both unmodified and the modified forms in UV and MS channel. For the peptides like this, all modified forms are well reserved from separation. We expect a consistent quantification performance before between UV and the MS channel. Here, I use a bar chart to display the modification percentage. The samples are under green background are the controls, and the under red background are the sample treated with hydrogen peroxide. Under blue background are the samples and alkaline stress. The quantification is very producible across the whole sample set. Here is another example of deamidation. Asparagine 84, which has a very low modification level, even under false degradation condition. Since the high sensitivity and higher selectivity of a mass spec, we are able to achieve a reliable and robust detection at 0.1%. Let's take a look at the peptides affected by forced oxidation. Masanin-255 is in CH2 domain and very susceptible to environment changes. So we have a significant increase in modification level as the increase of the hydrogen peroxide level. Here, the alkaline stress did not affect our oxidation. For some of the methionine residues, they have uh, disterimers. For example, methionine 431, the two oxidized forms are correctly assigned by Unifine, and the modification levels is calculated. For monitoring purpose, Unifine allows to set up a limit to flag a warning for significant increase or decrease in components. Here I use T3 deamidation as example. I put some pseudo numbers to monitor the modification change, such as if it's less than 10% is acceptable. It's showing in the green color. If the deamidation is greater than 20%, give me a yellow warning color. And if it's greater than 30%, give a red arrow color. So within this function, people in the QC lab is able to report an abnormal change without digging into the details. For the unique PIP, only find from the unknown sample. Um, Unify is able to identify them, and under the comparison mode, the MOZ retention time and the intensity of both unknown samples and reference samples are highlighted in the column, and also the delta mass. Then we can reprocess the same data set using peptide mapping workflow. In this case, this is the heavy chain um, peptide 37 with the deamidation because it is not in our originally target list. So we are able to identify it from the peptide mapping workflow. After going through all the data, I satisfied with the result. 
Unifies is very flexible in generating the report, including sample experimental conditions, LC, UV, and MS result. Also, it could generate individual chapters for each the critical quality attributes. To summarize, I have discussed the water strategy of deploying the high-resolution UPRC at the MassSpec system with the compliant ready UNIFI informatics platform in later development in the QC lab. This platform provides accurate mass measurement, higher mass sensitivity, and a large dynamics range for robust quantification. Data independent acquisitions with MSE enables fragment ions confirmation without compromising MS based quantification. If new or differential MS peaks are detected, the investigation of the new peak can be accomplished within unified peptide mapping workflow without the need of new data acquisition. In addition, to peptide mapping based MAM. This solution has been deployed for intact and subunit protein monitoring in QC releasing testing as well. Therefore, we believe these platform solutions will meet compliance requirements and provide a seamless transfer of high resolution LC method from characterization to monitoring in regulated environments. However, not all organizations are ready to deploy the high-resolution mass spec system into QC lab due to the high cost and required mass spectrometry expertise. Following my presentation, my colleague, Dr. Robert Birdsall, will discuss water's alternative strategies of QDA system. Thank you, Jing, for expertly and concisely getting the webinar going on product and process monitoring and setting the stage for the rest of the presentation. Much appreciated. If you're just now joining our webinar, welcome and thanks for tuning in. There will be a question and answer segment at the end of the presentations. Please type your questions into the answer question box on the left-hand side of your console and then hit submit. Our next speaker is Dr. Robert Bertzall. Robert. Thank you, Jing, and thank you everyone for joining us today. As Jing demonstrated in her presentation, water's high-resolution mass spectrometers, when coupled with our UNIFI platform, offer a capable solution in the characterization and monitoring of product quality attributes of biotherapeutics throughout the manufacturing environment. An alternative strategy I would like to discuss today is the use of nominal mass detectors for the routine monitoring of attributes that have been previously identified and characterized using high-resolution mass spectrometry. This strategy involves using quadrupole-based detectors like the QDQDA in a regulated environment such as QC labs where a mass detector can fa facilitate the ability to monitor multiple attributes in a single acquisition. The end goal of which is to offer a robust cost-effective workflow that can improve productivity by reducing the number of essays required for release essays while strengthening confidence in data interpretation through the addition of orthogonal detection techniques. Before we look at some comparisons of the force degradation study, I wanted to take a minute to introduce the QDQDA and some of its features. By way of introduction, the QDQDA mass detector has been a pioneering product that exemplifies our focused innovation strategy here at Waters. Our goal in the development of the QDA was to give analytical chemists and chromatographers with no mass spec experience the ability to collect mass information in the same way they currently collect optical information. This was accomplished by providing a compact, robust, and affordable mass detector that integrates into existing Waters UPLC or HPLC systems and is easy to use as an optical detector in your LC stack. The instrument control, data acquisition, and reporting functions are all fully integrated into the Empower Chromatography data software. 
So anyone currently using Power 2 Feature Release 5 or Empower 3 based HPLC or UPLC systems can literally add the QDQDA to their existing stack and begin collecting mass data. In this slide, we show how the QDA detector can fit right into an existing stack. As part of its design, the QDA requires minimal training to operate by the end user. Also, qualification of the instrument is currently available, meaning it can be added to LC systems throughout an organization in both non-regulated and regulated environments. The QDA has also been designed to work with both 110 and 220 volt power supplies, making integration into existing lab settings easier as modified electrical connections in North America are not required. And lastly, the QDA requires minimal maintenance, making it incredibly to use as I will show on the next few slides. As I previously mentioned, adding a QDA to an existing stack and running it is no more difficult than running an optical detector on your system. This is illustrated on the right slide of the slide where the QDA mass detector is listed along with the other instrument modules in the graphical user interface within Empower. As part of the instrument method, users can define their mass range, whether they want positive or negative, or both ionization modes. And in addition, they can define specific masses of interest to monitor by using the selected ion recording feature. Another nice feature of the QDA is that it can perform automated calibration and resolution with every startup to ensure the detector is operating within specification. In addition, the electrospray interface has been optimized at the manufacturing facility to preserve the resolution of your separation. The pre-optimized source greatly limits the amount of tuning necessary, making mass detection much more approachable and accessible to all users. And I just want to point out on this slide, the QD console graphical interface for the monitoring of key parameters to ensure the QDA is operating within pre-optimized settings are shown. Now, as I mentioned previously, the QDA is incredibly robust and requires minimal maintenance. There's just two components that periodically need to be replaced. The sample aperture as shown on the left, and the pre-assembled capillary probe shown on the right. As part of the purpose, purposeful design approach, the engineers at Waters have designed these parts to be disposable to make replacement as easy as possible. And parts can be replaced literally within minutes. So to summarize the key points we just discussed, the QDQDA is the culmination of Waters' experience and knowledge to deliver an innovative product that has experienced tremendous success since its launch. The compact design and affordability makes it simple to deploy like an optical detector and just as easy to use and maintain. Since its launch, the QDQDA has played a role in expanding and strengthening the capabilities of analytical chemists and chromatographers everywhere by allowing them to collect mass data routinely for greater confidence and insight into their separations. And now that you have some background on the QDI, I want to transition the discussion to the use of the QDA for product quality attribute monitoring. Over the next several slides, we will focus on a peptide map separation where the QDA was added as an orthogonal mass detector and discuss the advantages of using a configuration such as this. The discussion will focus on the points listed here and conclude with a comparison of the data acquired from the force degradation study using both LCMS strategies. To start, this is an example of an en enzymatic digest of the monoclonal antibody trastuzumab. In this particular case, the enzyme we used was trypsin. Now, as I mentioned previously, the compact design of the QDA allows for it to be easy to easily deployed in existing LC-based workflows to provide orthogonal mass data in the same acquisition. In this slide, the front panels of the detectors have been opened to illustrate how the QDA is plumbed in a serial configuration into the existing flow path after the optical detector. And I wanted to note that the short path length of the capillary from the TUV outlet to the QDA ESI source preserves the chromatographic profile of the peptide map resulting in highly comparable chromatograms between the optical and mass data with negligible retention time shifts and or additional peak dispersion.
closer inspection of the mass data reveals that QDQDA is able to detect peptides over a wide range of molecular weights. Here we show the mass spectrum of the largest triptych peptide from the transtuzumab digest, peptide T15, from the heavy chain. While this peptide is quite large with over 60 residues and an average molecular weight of nearly 7,000 Dalton, we observe six different charge states within the QDA scan range. Now, since enzymatic digest can generate peptides that span a wide range of molecular weights, a natural question, question from this data related to product quality attribute monitoring is how many of the peptides can we observe in a typical digest and over what mass range can we observe those in? To answer that question, we analyzed the trypsin digest using both trifluoroacetic acid and formic acid as commonly used acid modifiers in peptide mass experiments. In both cases, we were able to detect the resultant peptides from the digest. What we see here is a list of the peptides observed for the heavy chain of transtuzumab comparing the results obtained in both trifluoroacetic acid and formic acid-based diluents. As shown, all of the peptides are seen in both experiments, and we have highlighted either in blue or green that peptides seen in each experiment. Overall, slightly more charge states can be seen using formic acid as acid modif modifier, but regardless, all peptides are well detected using formic acid or trifluoroacetic acid as the acid modifier. Similar to the data on the previous slide, here we show the peptides associated with the light chain of transtuzumab. Again, we see all the peptides with each modifier, while the charge states in some cases may be slightly different. The key takeaway from this data is that the QDA is compatible with both TFA and formic acid-based separations, which makes integration into workflows used in existing legacy methods much easier. With the ability of the QDA to detect the peptides generated from an enzymatic digest using two commonly used acid modifiers verified, we can now explore some specific benefits of the QDA for monitoring product quality attributes and peptide maps. Let's look first at a fairly common issue, which is partial coelution and how mass detection can reduce SA variability. In this case, we have a pair of peptides which are partially coelutin. If we rely on UV integration alone, we have a potential issue in that we may over or underestimate the species of interest, making accurate quantification difficult. With the QDA, however, we can selectively monitor each of the peptides by using their unique mass via extracted ion chromatograms, adding a new dimension of specificity. This specificity leads to more accurate determination of the abundance of each species. When we look at the improved specificity provided by the QDA, a natural application of this is the quantification of peaks of interest. Shown here are linear ranges for each detector and mode of acquisition when using both UV and mass detection. What we see is that we have expanded the linear dynamic range of the method by incorporating the QDA. By using the total ion chromatogram or incorporating selected ion recording, you can greatly expand the linear range your method can cover. The expanded detection range is particularly useful in applications such as product quality attribute monitoring. In this case, monitoring oxidation of methionine located at residue 255 in the T21 fragment of the heavy chain of transtuzumab. Using our CSH column with a formic acid modifier in the mobile phase, we see the advantage of using the QDA in terms of the level of sensitivity possible. While each peptide will have its own associated ionization efficiency, near the limit of quantification, the data obtained will be similar to, the, to that shown here. In this case, we are able to achieve reliable detection of an impurity at very low levels with impressive linearity. The highlight, this highlights the utility of the QDA for detection and quantification of low-level peptide impurities.
The past few slides have demonstrated the advantages of adding mass detection into existing LC workflows. The next question is, how do we integrate those advantages within a chromatographic data software such as Empower to fully realize a methodology such as multi-attribute monitoring for the routine monitoring of product quality attributes? In this slide, we show how process and methods can be programmed for attribute monitoring within Empower. For those not familiar with Empower, Empower process and methods offer an array of customizable process and settings for the integration of chromatographic data such as impurities. In this example, we show two process and methods. Specifically, I'm showing the Component Manager tab for the detection and integration of deamidation and oxidation impurities of known product quality attributes of trastuzumab. The individual process and methods can be grouped together in a single acquisition run based on the XICs of the product quality attribute of interest. This is illustrated for the oxidation impurity for the trypsin fragment T21 of the heavy chain, where we have programmed an XIC channel with the impurities related charge states. This, pro this process can be repeated for multiple attributes in the same acquisition as we show here, with each one being assigned a unique processing and reporting method within the Empower Method Set Editor. Now what's nice is after the initial configuration, the same method set can be used repeatedly for automated routine monitoring of multiple product quality attributes. So using the multi-attribute methodology just described, the forced degradation samples were analyzed in triplicate with multiple product quality attributes being monitored in each run. To facilitate comparison with the high-resolution MS data, samples from the same aliquots were prepared on the same day, and identical LC configurations and settings were used for the separation. XIC values were based on the peptide's average mass for the QDA acquisition. In this slide, we show the results of the deamidation of asparagine at residue 30 in the trypsin fragment T3 of the light chain. From the, from the results, we can see that the relative abundance calculated by Empower using the QDA mass data shown here in green agrees quite well with the high resolution data shown here in red. Also, as expected, expected with the forced degradation, we see a characteristic downregulation of the native form of asparagine shown on the left bar plot with a corresponding upregulation in the isodeamidated form shown on the right bar plot. In this next example, we monitored the oxidation of methionine at residue position 431 in the trypsin fragment T41 of the heavy chain. This particular example illustrates how the QDA can improve the accuracy of impurity abundance. Similar to what was observed in the high resolution data, partial coelution is occurring between the oxidized impurities and an adjacent unrelated peak as shown in the top trace on the left for the UV detector. Now one approach may be to re-optimize the gradient to resolve these two impurities from the interferon peak for improved integration accuracy at the cost of productivity. Or we can save time by using the specificity afforded by the QDA and use extracted ion chromatograms to assess impurity levels as we've done here in the bottom left chromatogram. Similar to the deamidation results, the relative abundance of the oxidized impurities calculated by Empower using the QDA mass data agree quite well with the high resolution data and show similar trending over the stress samples. In this final example, I wanted to show the benefit of adding the QDA into an attribute monitoring workflow for the worst case scenario, which is that of a full coelution. Glycopeptides are notoriously hydrophilic and can be quite challenging to fully resolve from each other, as shown in the top optical tray shown here. Yet knowledge of the relative abundance can be quite valuable for monitor and bioreactor processes. Similar to before, we can leverage the advantage of added mass detection by selectively recording ions associated with low abundant glycopeptides. In this slide, the relative abundance of the glycopeptides calculated by Empower using the QDA mass data compare quite well to the high resolution data shown earlier. Collectively, these results show with the addition of mass detectors such as the QDQDA, we can expand our ability to detect and monitor product quality attributes that may be challenging from an optical only based methodology as well as increase our confidence in data interpretation. Lastly, 
The remaining question is how to handle the data we've shown in the last few slides to fully automate the multi-attribute monitor methodology. In this slide, we have linked unique reported methods for each attribute being monitored in the peptide map through the method set we showed earlier. After acquisition, Empower will automatically process and generate these reports, which can be viewed at any time. In this example, we've shown the report for the deamidation of asparagine at residue 30 of the light chain, with its associated chromatograms and relative abundance for each species reported in the table summary, showing that the QDQDA can be fully integrated into Empower-based workflows in non-regulated and regulated environments. Now, while we've shown how the QDQDA can be used for multi-attribute monitoring or product quality attributes in LC-based workflows, I wanted to mention it also has been used successfully in other peptide map applications. On this slide, a recent publication from Zhang and colleagues successfully validated a method for identity testing of monoclonal antibodies using the QDA to monitor the unique masses associated with the CDR-containing peptides. And on a final note, I would like to mention that the QDQDA is not restricted to peptide maps only. A testament to the benefit of adding a technology such as the QDQDA can be seen in its rapid uptake across industry for a variety of applications. What's on this slide is a partial list of users in industry and academics and some of the applications they are using it for. Much of these users' success is based on the deployable design of the QDQDA. So in summary, during today's webinar, we have discussed two compliant-ready LCMS platform solutions for our customers to choose to deploy MS capabilities in regulated late development and QC laboratories based on their organization's strategies and needs. Our high-resolution MS solution offers higher MS performance in terms of mass accuracy, dynamic range, and sensitivity, as well as easy method transfer within a single platform solution, but might face higher deployment challenges. Alternatively, the QDQDA mass detector is designed for the chromatographer, providing nominal mass measurements and a good dynamic range for low abundant variant monitoring, and which can be easily added to an existing LCUV-based workflow with Empower. This strategy has much lower requirements on capital and operational costs, as well as minimal training and maintenance requirements. We believe these two platform solutions offer our customers the flexibility to choose the best fit-for-purpose solution to deploy MS capabilities in the regulated environments based on their organization's visions and needs. And we would like to acknowledge the people responsible who have contributed to this work. And at this time, I'm going to hand control back to the moderator for questions and answers. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. And thanks again to you, Jing, for your detailed discussions on the critical role that mass spec technologies can play in the discovery and characterization of biotherapeutic attributes. Your presentations have definitely resonated with our audience based on the number of questions that we have received. So if you'll bear with us just for a few seconds, we're going to get set up for our Q&A portion of our webinar and take the first question. Okay, so let's begin the Q&A and we'll start with Jing. Jing, is the characterization peptide map workflow and attribute monitoring done within one injection? Yes. So for the acquisitions, that's it's a one injection. What the workflow I'm talking about in the characterization and the screening, that is uh, just the data processing workflow. So people can uh, process in their data use either workflow. And Jing, we have another question. Do you have a capability of creating a library for library search, or does it have a built-in library? Yes. Um, the libraries is um, based on the molecule um, people are interested in to create the attribute uh, they want to monitor in the library. 
this is a customized library. But we also have um, uh, two uh, glycan released glycan libraries um, in the scientific library. Yes, for 2AB and the ready flow for the released glycan analysis. And Jing, you mentioned that the HRMS platform can also be used for intact MS monitoring. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, yes. That's um, a good question. So we know a lot of customers using our Zero QTOR platform to do intact protein analysis for the monoglobal uh, antibodies QC release test. So by using intact or subunit analysis, uh, there's some benefits such as fast, easy. There's not have uh, too much sample preparation um, then to minimize or reduce the artifaction from the sample preparation. Oh, Jing, okay, do you ever observe UV detector-related oxidation or other post-column oxidation, and how would you recommend dealing with this? So, um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I go back to uh, uh, look at the data as we have, so we don't find any artifact affected uh, oxidation from our uh, TUV system. So, yeah, that's, that's just a good question. So when we're looking about the, from the same retention times, uh, uh, modified and uh, unmodified, we didn't find any oxidized species in that retention time. I think um, our system using here is the h class bio system with the um, titanium seal be helpful to limit those artifact modifications. And Ying, why is a UV detector needed for MAM analysis? Sure. Yes. Um, I think the UV detector still play an important role here, um, such as in set, set up the system suitability to reflect sample preparation, loading situation, as well as the chromatographic performance. Also, uh, UV-based quantification is very robust. For a well-separated species, uh, we can monitor it using UV-based quantification for sure. Also, I know there's uh, many um, industries, people using the LC UV uh, peptide method in the uh, CQA monitoring and also for um, the LC UV uh, release the master test. That will be helpful for the customer to evaluate to add the MS as quantification method, uh, also help to transfer and upgrade the method. And thank you, yeah. Robert. Uh, someone has a question. QDA is the wide linear range and high sensitivity only achievable in SIR mode? Now, actually, the data that I showed the um, the XIC performed quite well too. The the slide that it had the linear range for the XICs was actually performed in TFA, which had a little bit of ion suppression. Um, what you will see, though, is for maximum sensitivity, you'll want to use SIRs and formic acid as your ion parent reagent. And, uh, Robert, regarding QDA, I'm sorry, you done? Yeah. Okay, so regarding QDA specificity, what is considered as the true value? For specificity, since you're using um, your, your QDA, we're using average mass in this particular case. So for any of the XICs and SIRs that we did, 
we are calculating the um, charge state based on average mass. When you take on multiple charge states for peptides, you'll see that um, the resolution of the instrument will put you closer to average mass than monoisotopic. And Robert, can the QDA be used for peptide mapping? More specifically, what are the other applications of QDA besides impurity detection? Well, you can also, you saw there's, um, on the last slide, we have several customers who have been using it in other areas. Um, we've also had a lot of success in that. We've tried it with subunit analysis, oligonucleotides, vikins. So what we found is it performs equally well in these applications. I think my only recommendation with any new technology, though, is a customer really has to evaluate their panel of uh, analytes because we've tested a broad base of um, proteins and peptides and whatnot, but I'm not going to say we've covered every base that customers might be dealing with. So I think due diligence is on the uh, customer to test everything that they might want to use it for to really make sure the QDA is applicable to their, their method. And speaking of methods, someone asks, Robert, can I use the QDA for intact analysis of antibodies? That's a good question. We, we did try that, and the antibody, the trastuzumab at the intact level just wouldn't ionize well for um, the QDA. I couldn't get it into the scan range for the QDA. But as I said in the, for the last question, when we went to the subunit level, we could detect it with multiple charge states. So I wouldn't say that it can't do intact analysis, but it really depends on the ionization efficiency of the molecule and how much charge it can adopt to bring it into that scan range. And Robert, how does the QDA perform over time with samples containing salts or detergents? Yeah, we had a, this came up with a customer too. Um, essentially, our peptide digests were not desalted. So the data that I showed for the, um, for the QDA was basically injected as a straight digest. And it performed very robustly over time, and it, it hasn't had issue. But for customers that are concerned with the um, salts in their, their samples, We've actually went back and provided a um, divert valve feature that they can actually order from us now. So they can actually bypass the MS detector for the first couple minutes to desalt the sample and then actually start acquiring data. And Robert, have you found any applications where the QDA has not been fit for purpose? I think. This is similar to the question we had before. I, I haven't had any particular issue with the QDA and the applications we've tested, but I think it, it's still, once again, I said it really, with any new technology, a customer needs to evaluate what they have in mind for the QDA to see if it's applicable. And, Ying, we have a question for you. How do I handle run-to-run, -run, day day-to-day variation? Will this affect the quantification results? Yes, I think that is the most uh, uh, important questions for the people who want to implement uh, the MS in their uh, development or QC lab. So uh, we all know, unlike the UV response, mass spec response may be affect on the ionization efficiency, such like this. But in these studies, we demonstrate today we are monitoring relatively percentage in the injection. So we will recommend all the customer to do their suit system suitability setup to uh, make sure um, the LOQ, the LOD limit can be achieved. Then this software unifies its pre-wide flexibility to set up the customer calculation and the system suitability like I mentioned in the talk. So such as the relative and uh, absolutely UV MS response for the peptide uh, or the spiked in standard, people can spike in like blue ink or other standard proteins to monitor the intensity and also can do intensity normalization. There's the functions in the software. And then yeah. someone asks, how do I set up new peak detection criteria? What would be the MS threshold setting? 
Yeah, that's the hot topic in the conference. It's very good questions, also challenge question. Um, I don't think the industry have a standard set up for the new tech, a new peak detection yet. So when um, more and more people implement the MS uh, in their environment, we will accumulate more experience and knowledge on how to set up the MS threshold properly, um, which we not missing to detect the new important attribute, but avoid unnecessary investment. Um, yeah. What? So we here we demonstrate uh, is the unified platform for the LC MSC acquisition. It provides the flexibilities to do. Uh, de we can detect the peak, new peak, or the differentiate peak based on the user defined criteria using different uh, filter setting. Yes, the investigation capabilities to identify these peaks using peptide mapping workflow um, use the same acquisition method, just to reprocess the data uh, under the peptide mapping workflow, be able to identify those new peaks. Wow, the detailed yeah. answer, thank you. And Robert, have you encountered any problems using average mass over accurate mass to distinguish species such as deamidation using the QDA? That's a good question. So, I, and this is kind of ties into the first question. Um, the case for strategy two is that it's relying on the characterization to be performed upstream. So you're going to use a high resolution MS upstream to do full characterization of your, your biomolecule. And then when you get into that QC environment, it should be well known at that time for monitoring. So deamidation events where they have such a um, lim um, small mass difference with the one Dalton for deamidation specifically, as long as it's chromatographically resolved, we can actually use Empower to uh, uniquely identify those two peaks for processing. But I, I just really want to emphasize, though, that strategy two relies on complete characterization to be done upstream using high-resolution, accurate mass. And then we have a question for you. On your experience, how much sample preparation, how much sample preparation has an impact on the PTM? Yes. Sample preparation does affect on the PTM levels, especially for oxidation um, and the deamidation as well. So, um, in this uh, case study, we optimize the digestion time to uh, reduce the digestion time from uh, the overnight room temperature of 4 hours 37 degree to 1 hour digestion, which really uh, minimize the um, artifacts of the PTM. Well, thank you, Ying. Now, unfortunately, we've run out of time, but please note that this webinar will be archived for one year on our website, www.jenangnews.com. If you miss parts of it, you can watch it again, or you can recommend it to your colleagues and friends, which we highly recommend. I want to say thanks again to the panel for the outstanding presentations, and I also want to say thank you to our audience for your attention and for your very thoughtful questions about various topics brought up during the webinar. And thank you to Waters, whose support made this webinar possible. Thank you for now.